Hey guys, I'm driving through remote areas of Sri Lanka to find evidence of Ravana. According to ancient texts, Ravana was a giant who stood more than 10 feet tall and he lived many thousand years ago. I was told that a private collector actually has the giant skull of Ravana. Unfortunately, nobody seems to know the exact location of this collector, so I'm searching for this place while driving through so many different roads. As I was about to give up my search, suddenly, by some weird coincidence, I find that house. Yes, that mysterious looking house which has these giant skulls. No signboards, nobody in sight, and giant skulls are just put up on the front without any protection. I'm immediately thrilled because I see these skulls and I pull up to this house, obviously shocked and eager to see what I'm going to find. Did I just find the ultimate evidence of giants? In many videos on my channel, I have posted evidence of giants, especially about Ravana, who was the greatest king of Sri Lanka. Did I just find the real skulls of the ancient giant race? Or are these mere models made of clay or some other material? Let's go take a closer look. These skulls are not models. They are, in fact, real skulls. Each of these giant skulls belongs to the same species. The skull is very large. You can see a gigantic lower jaw, and you can see that the nose is longer than usual. I went around the house trying to see if anyone was there. I could see uh, more bones on the ground, but no people. This was very, very strange. On the other side of the house, there are uh, bones from the body. These are also quite gigantic, much larger than modern day humans. I could see bones of the ribs, twice the size of humans and stacks of bones just strewn around the ground. I could even smell the bones. So these are not fake, they're actual bones. Look at how big each skull is. The giant's head must have been larger than my entire arm. It means that these giants would have stood at least 10 feet tall. And then I noticed something really strange. There are two eyes on either side. I mean, I could see the holes, the eye sockets. But look, there is a third eye, a giant third eye in the center of the forehead, not on just one skull, but on every giant skull, you can see this. Look at this baby giant skull. Even this has a third eye on its forehead. Today, some people think that the third eye denotes the pineal gland, and all human beings have the power to awaken the third eye by meditation and by other means. However, here we can see the giant species had a third eye in the center of the forehead. It was physically there. What do ancient Hinduism and Buddhism say about the third eye. It's really interesting because both religions say that their gods had a third eye. Shiva is obviously known for his third eye on his forehead. Sometimes even goddess Kali is shown with a third eye. But did you know that Buddha is also depicted with a third eye in many ancient statues? In fact, many cultures around the world talk about how all their gods had third eyes. Mesoamerican gods had third eyes, even Egyptian gods, the eye of the Horus, the eye of Ra. Uh, there is even this eye symbol on dollar bills. 
All this goes back to an ancient civilization which once had giants. In the West, they are known as Nephilim. But what about Sri Lanka? Does it have evidence of giants in ancient times? Yes, there is a strange mountaintop which has solid evidence of giants. The location is extraordinary. No, this is not Sigiriya, this is not the Ravana's palace. This is a different place known as Sri Pada, which means sacred footprint. On top of this mountain, there is a temple which does not allow any cameras. Inside the temple, there is a large footprint which is protected by monks and heavy security and a lot of security guards. All Sri Lankans agree that this is an authentic, prehistoric, giant footprint. Buddhists claim that this is the footprint of Buddha. Europeans call it the Adam's Peak. They believe that this was the footprint of Adam himself. But what do Hindus say about this? Hindus say, that this was the footprint of Lord Shiva himself. Local Hindus say that the original name of the site was called Sivanadipadam, which means Shiva's footprint in ancient Tamil language. And they claim that this piece of history is slowly being erased from Sri Lanka. I know some of you will think, well, the locals may have made up this name recently, and uh, some will even think that I am making up this name to support Hinduism. But I searched for old photos, and I realized that, yes, just a few years ago, they had signboards on the site which says Sivanadipadam, or Shiva's footprint, in Tamil. It also says Adam speak in English. But recently, new signboards have been placed which completely eliminate all the other names. And now, they just claim that this is Buddha's footprint. I mean, this is devastating because they're removing historical names which have existed for thousands of years. The original name of this mountain was Sivanolipadamalai, which roughly means a mountain that glows because of Shiva's footprint. Because locals say that a strange glow appears every night in the mountain because of the sacred herbs dedicated to Shiva. Now, whether this giant footprint belongs to Shiva or Buddha or anybody, I hope they can restore the ancient Tamil names also and keep them side by side. I mean, Sri Lanka has a great Buddhist history, but it also has a long Hindu history as well. Okay, we have seen the giant footprint. Now let's get back to the giant skulls. Since the house is locked and no one is there to explain what these skulls really are, I have to decipher it myself. When I see the back of the skull, I find something strange. It has a very unique depression at the top center. This is unlike any human or humanoid we have seen. See this, this is the hole for the ear. Also, do you, do you see the teeth on the lower jaw? There is another isolated lower jaw, and I could see the teeth on either side, much like the lower jaw of normal humans. These are the largest teeth in the world. They seem to be bigger than even shark's teeth. If you see the back of the head, there is a giant hole. This is quite intriguing to see. It's very strange because the position of the hole is very odd. In human skull, this hole is called the foramen magnum. This hole is the hole which facilitates the connection between the brain and the spinal cord. But if this species walked on two legs like humans, the spinal cord would be vertical, right? So the hole would have been at the bottom. 
but the hole is at the back of the skull, which means the spinal cord was horizontal. So this was an animal which walked on four legs. And what would that giant animal be? Yes, these are elephant skulls. This cavity in the center, which looks like the third eye socket, is actually the nasal cavity of the elephant. So some people must have seen these giant skulls while driving by, and then they must have thought that these were giant humanoid skulls. And this information spreads through word of mouth. So today, I failed my quest miserably, but just because I could not find evidence of giants in Sri Lanka today, does not mean that giants did not exist. There's an important principle in archeology. span Absence of evidence does not mean evidence of absence. I've shown you plenty of evidences of ancient giants. Some were even confirmed by government archeologists. Nearly 50 giant skeletons were unearthed in one city in the United States, but nothing like that has ever been found in Sri Lanka. But I'm hopeful I'm going to continue my search for more evidence of ancient giants. So what do you think? Did Ravana exist? Did giants exist in ancient times? Or were ancient texts merely imaginary stories? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. Please give this video a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.